This video, I want to go into distance in AP Calculus and how we actually use both pictures and equations to figure out total distance traveled, net distance traveled, and talk about the difference between those. So what I did is I have two slides, and they're the same type of question as far as distance-based questions, but very different presentation. So the one you're looking at right now is a very visual problem. This one came from a practice AP test in a non-calculator setting. You can see it's questions 8 and 9, so pretty early on in the test. They provided you with the picture that you see, they provided you with the directions, and then they asked two questions based off of that. And then the next slide I'm going to do is not visual at all, instead it's much more equation based and talking about what will our calculator do to help us as well. So what we're looking at here is a visual one, and this is going to remind you a lot of what we talked about in class when we talked about the one with the, the bicycle, or the girl going to, to school, riding her bicycle, and then turning around because she forgot her homework, and then going back, kind of the same idea. The difference between that problem and this problem is we have a spider, and the spider is crawling up a vertical blade of grass, and we want to use the picture that represents the velocity of the spider as he's crawling up and down this blade of grass to answer some questions. Now we talked in class that we want to think as a positive velocity is heading right and a negative velocity is heading left. Well this particular problem, instead of going kind of horizontally, this spider is moving up and down. He's going up and down a vertical blade of grass and so we have up as being positive and down as being negative. Not that he's not moving, but he's just moving in different directions. So the first problem wants to know when is the spider changing direction. So let's put a little marking on this picture to kind of give an explanation. The, the spider starts traveling, and you'll notice the first thing you see is that the velocity is positive, is above the x-axis. That means that my spider, in this case, is traveling up the blade of grass. Normally, when we did the bicycle problem in class, we would say that they're, that they're traveling to the right. In this case, since we're moving up and down, we're traveling up. Then, at 4, we have a velocity of 0. What that's telling me is I'm changing directions. Now, I am, the rest of my graph is below the x-axis, so now my spider is moving down because it has a negative velocity. So the answer to the first question is what value does the spider change direction and what value of time, that happens at 4 seconds. And you're looking for those intercepts, those places where the velocity is 0. Those are the places where we switch directions, whether we're moving right and left, or in this case, moving up and down. You're looking for when your velocity graph crosses the x-axis. So number 8 is pretty easy. There's not a lot of work to be done there. Number nine, the total distance traveled. Now, the word total is very important. This is the idea that I don't care if you, the, travel, the spider's going up the grass or down the grass, we, he's still traveling, and that's still distance that needs to be determined. Now, we did talk in class that if we want to find distance, we have to integrate velocity. But if you'll notice, I don't have an, an equation to integrate. What I have instead is a picture. And so what I'm going to do with a picture, I know if I want to integrate a picture, integration of a picture is area. That's what area is. It's finding the, the integration of a curve, looking at the area that's under a function. So if I can find the area under this curve, I can figure out how far my spider was traveling. So if I look at the first triangle, and it's got to be something geometric that you can do, I can do 1 half base times height. So I've got 1 half, my base is 4, and my height is 3. So that means my distance is 6. I am working with, it doesn't even say what the unit is, so I can't imagine it's very big. It does not tell me what unit it is. So that's OK. I know it's 6, 6 whatever, 6 meters, 6 inches, and, this, and my spider is so small it could be something like millimeters. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my trapezoid, what's underneath here, 1 half, my height of my trapezoid is 1, and my bases are 4 and 2. You could also split up into a rectangle and two triangles, or if you'll notice, it actually is just like one big rectangle. So I get 3. So what this tells me is my spider went up the grass 6 units, and down the blade of grass 3 units. It wants to know the total distance traveled, so I need to add those two together, giving me 9 units. If the question would have been worded differently, if it wanted to know the net distance, how far away was the spider from where he originally started, it would be 3, because I went up 6 units and then back down 3 units. So, I, so the spider ended up 3 units away from wherever his starting point was on this blade of grass. I do want to mention one other thing that could be asked, and it's usually kind of an extension question or a bonus type question, is we could talk about the acceleration of the spider at any particular time. So if they ask about acceleration, one thing we know about acceleration is it is the derivative of velocity. 
So if I look at this picture and say, well, what was the spider's acceleration at two seconds? What it's actually saying is, what is the derivative of velocity at two seconds? And again, you might say, but I don't have an equation. But you have a picture. And if I want to take the derivative of something, what it's asking is for is slope. So what this problem is really saying is, what is the slope of this particular graph at 2? Now, the nice thing is, this is a linear piece. This is something I can very easily find slope of. I don't need any type of equation. If I look at this, my slope of this piece is 1. So that would tell me that my acceleration is 1. Now, again, I don't know my unit exactly what it is, you know, meters squared per second, something like that. But I know that my acceleration represents the slope of that picture. I could do the same thing if I wanted to know what the acceleration is of the spider at three and a half seconds. I could find the slope there. The only thing I couldn't find is where there's a sharp point. I couldn't ask you the acceleration at three, for example, because we actually cannot derive that further because of the sharp point. So that gives you an, a, a variety of questions that can be asked as far as the change in directions, when it occurs, the total distance, the net distance, and even the acceleration, all coming from a picture and not an equation. I want to compare that to my next example. I also came, found this from the same source, the same book. And this is one that was in more of a calculator type section. So I'm going to pull up my calculator here in a second just to show you what the calculator will do for you. And this one also wants total distance. So you'll see right away, total distance traveled. And we'll talk again about the difference between that and net distance as we go through this of a particle, and a lot of times they, do, they don't use a spider, they'll just say a particle, that is moving along a straight line with a particular velocity. So we, again, we talked about the idea that if we integrate velocity, we get distance. But the issue is we have to figure out if the particle has changed directions. Because if all I do is integrate velocity, I get a net distance. Meaning it's not going to figure out if I made turn left, turn right. It's just going to figure out the total distance I am away from where I started. So let's look at your calculator for a second. I want to look at what this velocity graph looks like. So I'm going to do a few things to kind of make it easier for me to see. Uh, first thing, make sure you're in radian mode. Hopefully you already are. We're going to go into y equals, get rid of all the functions that you might have in there. And I'm going to replace it with my velocity equation, which is the sine of pi t. Obviously, I'm just typing in x. sine of pi x. And instead of hit graph, I'm going to change my window a couple reasons. First of all, I want to make sure I'm only looking at the time interval that's given. It only wants to know from 0 to 2. So I am going to switch it from 0 to 2. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my y because I don't want to look at anything that's going on really far. I really only care about the x-axis. So I'm going to change that boundaries as well. And then I'm going to hit graph. And I'm going to take a look at what I see. OK, so here's the graph that I see of sine. And what you'll notice is I'm looking to see where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm trying to see where it equals 0. And you can see pretty obviously on my calculator, especially since I set my window from 0 to 2, you can see that at 1, I've switched direction. So essentially what this particle does is it starts out positive, meaning it's heading towards the right. Then at 1, it changes directions. And now we're heading to the left. Now my guess is if I just integrated sine of pi t from 0 to 2 and didn't take into consideration the change in direction, I'm going to get 0. Because if you'll notice, I have the exact same region. I have that symmetry heading to the right as I do heading to the left. And if you want to confirm that, you can go into your math and 9. And I'm probably going here. Yeah, there we are. And I can type in from 0 to 2. I can type in the sine of pi x. And you don't need parentheses there. If you do it, that's fine. And you're going to first think, wow, I get this number 8.5. But then you have to look a little further and see that I have the e there, the scientific notation. So this means this is actually 0 .0000000 and on and on and on, 8, meaning I didn't travel at all. That's my net distance. If I want to find my total distance, I have two options. One option, especially if this is a calculator problem, is I could just take the absolute value of that velocity function. The calculator will take care of that for you if you include absolute values. Let me show you what I mean by that on my calculator. If I take the exact same setup, so I'm going to go back to math 9. I'm going to put in 0 to 2. And I'm going to hit the absolute value, which is under math 
and number. So the very first one, it looks like abs. And I'm going to type in the same thing inside absolute value bars. We'll get a very different answer. 1.273 units, whatever measure of distance I'm working with, that is my total distance traveled. Now, let's say you weren't allowed to use a calculator, or you just were supposed to set this up to kind of show that change in direction. Another option is for you to say, you know, I'm going to go from 0 to 1 of the sine of pi x, but then I'm going to add the absolute value of whatever I get from 1 to 2 of sine of pi x, because I know that this is going to end up being a negative area, but it's still a distance that was traveled. So that is one option. Sometimes they're going to ask you to set things up where they don't want you to go to your calculator. They just want you to illustrate the idea that you know if we change direction, if we're heading to the left, that distance still counts. So when you get your answer here, let me come back to my calculator, I could do it the long way, as I just said. I could just type in um, I could go from 0 to 1 of sine of pi x and then add that to the absolute value. Or some people just say, well, I'm just going to subtract that one because it's negative and it's going to give me a positive. Or the shortcut, if you're allowed to use your calculator, is showing that you know that if you take the absolute value of velocity, it will deal with that change in directions and it will give you the total distance and not give you that net distance, that canceling out distance. So here are two side-by-side -side problems. You got to see a visual one where you had no equation. You were relying more on the picture, on the geometry of the picture, what shapes you had things working with area. And then here's one that has no picture whatsoever. You can look at a calculator to get that picture, but then set up my integral using the idea that you understand if you change direction, you're going to change that total distance. So there are two side-by-side -side problems. You will see a little bit of both when you take a test. You will be allowed to use a calculator. So you can use that absolute value to get that total distance. Um, I will tell you, don't expect the place where it changes directions to be quite as pretty. Um, because you're not always going to have it happen at x equals 1. You could have a decimal, and if you were asked to set it up, then you need to store that decimal, know exactly where it crosses that axis, so you can get that change of directions and you can set up your distance. So hopefully this video kind of shows you the side-by-side -side comparison resistance and makes you ready for the test and any questions in this area.